Breaking ball, fly ball, center field. Should be deep enough to score the run. Ruggiano tags on his way home. And Miami is tied in. Looks good in the suit. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball, in the hole, it's short, long throw, Mets have a run. But uh, someone just wants to go to sleep. Ground ball, base hit, right field, dots around third, coming home, Baxter's throw, and he will score! It's tied, Ruggiano to third. We are still rocking here, we're going into what, 16 innings now. DJ Vertigo, the Cleveland, that's crazy. Fly ball, left field. Tagging is Ruggiano. Let's go. Home ball game. Oh, what a finish. What a ball game. Hallelujah. Hard day's night, and right back at it. Late night with the fish was fun last night. Tonight, the Marlins and the Mets go at it in game two. The Marlins outlasted the Mets in 15 innings, five and a half hours. Wake up, everybody. Let's go. Baseball to be played here tonight. Game two of this three-game series on an email and Twitter Tuesday. Hi everyone, Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Hope everybody got some sleep. Welcome back to Marlins Park. Game like last night, you get to the 15th, so many pitchers used, so many players used, so much invested. It's a game you obviously really want to win. It's one of those games, Rich, when it's all said and done, and obviously you want to win it. The, the Mets didn't, the Marlins did. But as a team, it's a tremendous team win because just about everybody participated in the game. So as a team, as a unit of 25 guys, it's a great win. 16 hits the Marlins were able to put together. How about the third longest game in, in Miami history? Uh, the longest game between these two teams, the Mets and the Marlins. So a lot of things happened in the game. We'll talk about them tonight. I'm sure we'll get a lot of uh, tweets and emails about it, but a fun night. And both managers, when they got to the clubhouse and they saw the starting pitcher, said, hey, I need seven or eight innings from you tonight. Coventry Healthcare brings you the starters. Marlins have seen Jeremy Hefner. And will someone please score some runs for Kevin Slowey? Well, look at Kevin Slowey. Five starts. Uh, he's yet to get a win, but his ERA is under two and a half. He's only faced the Mets one other time in his career. And Rich mentioned Jeremy Hefner saw the Marlins earlier in the season. All right, so there you have it. Longest day is the hashtag. That's our theme tonight on a Twitter and email Tuesday. We'll try to keep Craig out of the Clevelander tonight.
Thank you, Rich. Out here in our beautiful center field set with Jeff Conine, the Marlins last night winning that long game, as we mentioned. That's our theme tonight, longest game. But the big difference when you're on the top side of that as opposed to the other side. Yeah, big difference. And, you know, when you play a game like that, you definitely want to come out on top because, you know what, baseball, it doesn't know anything about you got a game the next day. Yeah. And it's always better to come to the ballpark after a game, ballpark after a game like that yeah. and a win. Uh, to go against these guys tonight. And with the fish building some momentum here and feeling good about themselves. They really need to win. Two in a row for wins. the first time this year. That's but big. I think it's big for them, especially because they've gone through so many tough times here early in the year. Email Twitter Tuesday. Let's get down to Allison. All right. Well, after a long day, a long night at the ballpark, that is the theme for the broadcast today. If you want to tweet us, send us your tweets at Fox Marlins and use the hashtag longest day. We want to hear about some of the longest days you've ever had. You can also go to FoxSportsFlorida.com, click on Game Connect, and ask the broadcast. It was a long one at Marlins Park last night, five and a half hours, 15 innings. Certainly probably feels a lot longer, though, for the Mets, who had to deal with the loss after all that. Heck, though, it wasn't even the longest game of the night. Last night, the A's and the Angels went to 19 innings, played 6 hours, 32 minutes, the longest game in either team's franchise history. So while it was a long one for the Marlins, second longest game of the night throughout Major League Baseball. So that's going to be our theme for the broadcast on this email, Twitter Tuesday. Guys, back up to you. Thank you, Allison. 22-year-old Marcelo Ozuna will make his Major League debut. Comes up from A Jacksonville with the Stanton injury. What's his biggest challenge in his debut tonight? Biggest challenge is calming the nerves. Uh, of course, you want to be nervous, but you want to use that to your advantage. Hopefully, he'll get in there, realize, hey, this is just the game of baseball again, just like I've been playing, and relax. It's exciting to watch him, and he's a, he's a big-time prospect for the Marlins with major power. Free swinger? He's going to have some fun tonight. Big-time free swinger. He's got a lot of power. 20 home runs, three-plus years in the minor leagues. Maybe he can supply some of that run support. It's been elusive for Kevin Slowey as the battery gets ready for baseball. Florida is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. By AT&T U-verse. Check availability at 1-800. Pick AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Just for Men Auto Stop. The foolproof way to get rid of gray. In Miami tonight. A 22-year-old makes his major league debut out of the Dominican Republic. The long road, Marcelo Zuna spent five years in single A before this year getting his first taste of double A. And here he is in the base. And here are the Mets. Let's meet him. Let's greet him. 
Mike Baxter, Ruben Tejada, David Wright at third, hitting third. Sorneck limited him to a pinch hit appearance last night. Lucas Duda, Daniel Murphy, Ike Davis. You got the left-handed bats all lined up. Then Anthony Recker, Juan Lagares, and Jeremy Hefner. That is Kevin Slowey. He will turn 29 in a matter of, of days. Pitch of Petty brings you the first pitch, and there it is. It's a strike. Jerry Meals calling balls and strikes tonight. Mike Baxter, Ruben Tejada, David Wright all lined up to face Slowey here in the first. And no question, uh, Rich, both managers, Mike Redmond, Terry Collins, uh, want to see their starters take this game as deep as they can. Opponents with runners in scoring position hitting just 160 against Kevin Slowey. Slowey trying to win a ball game. If he does win this ball game, Tommy, it will be somewhat of a a milestone in that he hasn't won a major league game since 2010, September 18th, 2011. He was injured and went 0 and 8 with the Twins. He had awful run support that year. Last year he wasn't even in the big leagues, and he was injured as well. He broke a rib on a line drive, and the lack of run support has continued here in 2013. And he just missed that fastball on the inside part. It's three and two. Last time out for Slowly, no decision. The Marlins lost four to, four to three to the Cubs. He went six innings though and gave up just five hits and three runs. 3 2 pitch in the air to left. Juan Pierre. The elbow feels much better, by the way. So he does have a little bit of a knot on it, and he's included in the defense brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic, Florida. You know, as Juan Pierre told us, uh, it looked a lot worse than it really was. Uh, Ruggiano in center, and there's Marcel Ozuna making his major league debut in right field. Polanco and Green, Solano and Dobbs, and after catching 15 innings, Rob Brantley. Gets the night off, and his manager knows what it's like. I think Red had a game where he caught 15 plus. <laughs> On the other side of the diamond, John Buck as well going the distance, and Buck gets the night off. And of course, he had the big home run last night. Here's Ruben Tejada. Tejada was three for six last night and drove in a run. There were some guys on both sides of the diamond that had long nights. A one for seven for Buck, even though he had a homer. A one for seven for Daniel Murphy. Mike Davis was 0 for 5 on the Marlins end. Placido Polanco was 0 for 7. But you just don't picture that, do you? And there was a guy in baseball who was even worse. In that 19 inning game, Josh Hamilton was 0 for 8. Lil Tapper. And Slowey is off the mound to make the play with Dobbs at first tonight. Tejada is retired. And there are two outs here in the first inning. It was for us a long night, but a fun night last night. And as Slowey makes the play, we have to thank everyone that was here from Fox Sports Florida. The crew kept their energy going. We had the great late night theme music. We had a special guest appearance by David Wright in a pinch hitting capacity. His neck is better, so he's in the starting line. That's a little better. I think we'll keep our eye on uh, him when he throws. As he said, it, it might affect his throwing a little bit more than swinging the bat. Wright fouls it back to the screen. The year that David Wright is having, I think, is overlooked. Similar situation to Giancarlo Stanton in that most teams, when they game plan against this Mets lineup, they circle David Wright's name and say, don't let him beat you fourth in the National League with a 431 on base percentage so he's mastered Tommy what he talked to us about early in the season about being patient taking the walks but still doing damage he's got four doubles three triples he's driven in 19 yeah the 19 RBIs the on base percentage the batting average that's why he didn't want to miss too many games oh two pitches up and the count is one and two Big breaking ball from Slowey. Kevin Slowey, a native of Pittsburgh. Mike Redman, of course, 
caught his major league debut and caught him many times in Minnesota. And those were good years for Slowey. 2009, he was 10 and 3, 13 and 6 in 2010. Somebody asked uh, Mike Redmond before the game, did he have fun last night? And he said, I, you know, there was a little bit of fun in it, but there was also a lot of stress in it to try to figure out the moves. He had a few decoys out there at times. In the air, Ozuna coming in, and he calls for it, and welcome to the big league, kid. Ozuna makes the catch, and the Marlins are coming up in the bottom of the first in Miami. Scoreless. And tweets in a moment as we get this game underway. A nice start to it by Kevin Slowey. And the fish will bring this lineup out there. Joe Mahoney and Giancarlo Stanton placed on the disabled list late last night. Juan Pierre, Donovan Solano, Pasado Polanco, Greg Dobbs hits cleanup. Justin Ruggiano had a terrific night last night. And there's Marcelo Zuna sitting in the sixth spot, ready to make his major league debut at the plates. Miguel Olivo, oh, Nick Green has swung a bat. Well, lately, and slow he hits ninth. Hefner delivers. And Jeremy Hefner throws a strike. The 27-year-old out of Perkins, Oklahoma. Yeah, he lost that game to the uh, Marlins. Uh, Alex Sanabia pitching well, and in that game, Dobbs took him deep. That was at City Field. And he's out in front of Pierre. The count of 0-2. Pierre had a couple hits last night, including one after he got hit on the elbow. And he said that he kept the compression sleeve on at night. That helped get the swelling down, iced it, treated it, was in early to get that all taken care of. Now, this was last night. Off his elbow, and the squeamish part was when he got to first base and found he had a, a, a baseball sized knot. On his elbow, and it was growing. So it took about 30 seconds to uh, swell up the way it did. Please. And you'll remember, Pierre was at first base, and there were three times where right after that he had to dive back to first, and the first time Ike Davis tagged him, and he tagged him right on that elbow. A little tapper out towards second. Pierre asked Davis, hey, if we do this again, can you get me up closer to the wrist? <laughs> and he said, Davis said, okay, well, I'm, I'm okay with that. I got you. You got the Mets defense brought to you by the Cleveland Clinic, Florida. All right. They've made a couple of changes tonight. Uh, no change in left. Duda, Juan Lagares in center field. There's one change. Mike Baxter, David Wright, Tejada and Murphy up the middle like Davis. And Anthony Record is behind the plate, spelling John Buck for the evening. Donovan Solano, a couple hits last night. He was working on his bunting, 
in the cage. He drops down a, a decent one, but quickly out is Anthony Wrecker to pick it up, and Wrecker throws him out. Solano, had he been able to get that down the the third baseline, obviously would have had a little more success than this. Yeah, that's the goal to get this ball a little bit up the line. Wrecker just making his fourth start of the year, pounces on it. You saw him call off the pitcher. He says uh, to Hefner, he says, I got it. He does. He bare hands it. And textbook. So Polanco, who wore the 0 for 7 last night, stands in. And he hits a fly ball to right. Baxter, is that you? And he makes the catch. Seven pitch inning. All right, ready to go. We'll open up the tap on the emails when we return. H. H. Gray. Marlins Park, Marlins Mets, and it is a social media Tuesday. Tweets, emails, the Contessa is in the house. If you want to do it the old fashioned way, email, go to foxsportsflorida.com, click on Game Connect. Once you're on Game Connect, look for Ask the Broadcast, type in the question, send it away. Hashtag on Twitter at Fox Marlins is longest day as. Mike Davis, or excuse me, Lucas Duda stands in. Duda, Murphy, then Davis. The three lefty bats in the middle of the Mets order. Saw so that shot of Bark and Spider. They're always on Game Connect. 1 0 pitch from Slowey is up high. Our opening salvo, so to speak. Throw it out there. Is from Dan, an email. Tommy, longest game that you were part of as a player in the major leagues. Okay. It's from Dan in Davy. It was actually a doubleheader in Philadelphia with uh, many rain delays. And the uh, the second game didn't start until well after midnight. I didn't start the game, but I got in the game as a pinch hitter. There's a ground ball cracked into right field by Duda. And the Mets have the first hit of the ball game. Lucas Duda lead off hit. Here comes Daniel Murphy. And I pinch hit and at the time I pinch hit it was a little after 2 a.m. <laughs> after getting to the ballpark around. Oh probably around 2 33 in the afternoon. You know that's the, the thing about it last night for a guy like. A, a Chris Coughlin or a Austin Kearns or a Marlon Bird. Guys that pinch hit in the seventh or the eighth inning of the game. And then. It's like there's a whole nother game after that, but they can't play in it because they've already pinch hit. Slowly to the plate. Jacksonville's Daniel Murphy, who was just one for his last 19, 
And that one came last night. He was one for seven. Just a caveat as I, I came in after the at bat, I fly it out. Manager with the Phillies at the time, Danny Ozark. And I went up to Danny and I said, you know, Danny, I've done a lot of things in my life after 2 a.m., but getting a base hit isn't one of them. <laughs> Did that excuse it? <laughs> no, not really. The Ofer? <laughs> Ball and a strike. Duda not a threat to run, and Murphy takes down low. Slowly, as Tommy pointed out, against the Cubs, great control. And that's one of the, the hallmarks that Slowey has had throughout his major league career. He has, since 2009, been one of the very best in baseball at limiting walks. At the same time, from 2010 on, he's received the lowest run support in baseball. And it's amazing that that has gone all the way from the end of 2010 all the way to 2013. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, you could understand it if he remained with the same team. But by changing team and teams and still have uh, that happen is pretty incredible. He's two and two on Murphy. Who rolls it out to second? Solano to Green. Double play. 4 6 3. Nicely done. And that's what Slowey has, has done so well. He's limited damage. Been able to work out of trouble. Been able to get a lot of double plays. The run support, it's a, a stat that you hear for guys that have great ERAs but not great records. Matt Cain has lived in that neighborhood almost his entire career. Pretty much his entire career. He's always, always been amazing. And uh, Strasburg, he's on that list. Kevin Slowey this year in his five starts has gone five and a third innings or more in all five starts. And if you look back at the earned runs, given up one, two, one, one, and last time out he gave up three. Breaking ball misses outside. Stacy in Wellington. Nice to hear from you tonight, Stacy. Wants to know what is the object in Mike Redmond's hand? Is it a stopwatch? That went into right field. And that's a base hit. I believe that is a stopwatch. Speaking of uh, stopwatches, I was talking to a couple of scouts tonight, and they were telling me they were impressed. With the quickness to the plate of young Jose Fernandez uh, with a man on. Uh, it quickly he releases the ball and makes his pitch. Anthony Record now. That's what was lost in, in everything last night. The 15 innings, the five and a half hours. Was it was a Matt Harvey, Jose Fernandez matchup. And uh, Harvey looked sharper than Fernandez last night. He struck out seven. Neither young right hander had command of their fastball. And both had to rely on secondary stuff to get out. Had a tweet from uh, from Lonnie. She wants to know, and we talked a little bit about it last night. Why Redmond kept Fernandez in to hit, but not continue to pitch? Well, he was pretty much done pitching, and the bench was short with Mahoney not available. It was only the fourth inning, and Mike Redmond didn't want to use Kearns or Coglin that early in the game. And of course, last night's a great example of why that happens. You know, sometimes managers will roll the dice and they will pinch hit in the fourth or the fifth inning, but they really don't like to because, as managers will tell you, you never know what's around the corner, whether it's 15 innings or a big spot in the eighth or the ninth where you, you need somebody. The best thing uh, Redmond said, he said he had guys coming up to him, pitchers, saying, yeah, when I was in Little League, I played left field or... Yeah, I can play first base. I played there once in high school. <laughs> One-two pitch. And it's low and outside. Now, the stopwatch in his hand, Stacey, the reason that you see first base coaches with it, managers have it, is they like to keep a tab on the delivery time from first motion to ball to the plate of pitchers because that's how... Managers, first base coaches gauge on whether 
A guy is quick to the plate whether you got a shot to run and and steal and there goes the runner a check swing in the dirt and digging it out as a Levo and he throws him out. Wrecker couldn't check his swing scoreless in the second. Mike Redmond, now last night we had the ability and the stroke of good luck to have Mike Joe a spot up. And what a great game to have a spot of Mike'd up. A lot of the conversation we could not use during the game because it involved strategy in the game, but we were able to play it on the post game. We wanted to play you a clip last night, and it had to do with Fernandez getting his at bat last night. I wanted Nick to like, kind of reach out and try to poke you know, something. You sit there and you're like, all right, we're down, man. That's a long night. No, no, I'm with you. Huh? A guy. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. I agree, but I wanted to be closer so right. he could put, try right. to put the ball in play. We had second, third with nobody out or one out. Then I bring in one out. Let Kersey take a shot. Let Kersey do. Yeah, that's what I was asking. I wanted to know that's what, before. That's what I said it'd be aggressive. Yeah. Fucking send off or on anything close. And that was a spotter who had told Nick Green, look, we're not pinch hitting for Fernandez. So get a little closer to the plate, cover the strike zone a little bit, maybe go out of the strike zone to try to drive in a run. Now, is this last night or is this tonight? Because it, it seems like Dobbs <laughs> last night was spraying line drives all over the place. Now, Dobbs hit the ball well. He was two for six last night, had a walk, hit another ball pretty hard. He just uh, gets things going with a base hit tonight. But, yeah, that was great stuff. That's stuff you don't hear all the time uh, with Joe Espada, Mike, last night. And, and you, you heard Mike Redmond predicting that it could be a long night. And that conversation took place in, in between the fourth and the fifth inning. And you also heard him saying, had there been men, let's say second and third, he liked Kearns in that situation. Ruggiano now for Miami, and Hefner throws a strike. Justin Ruggiano had some terrific at-bats last night. A couple of walks. He had three hits, scored a couple runs. And obviously, with Giancarlo Stanton back on the disabled list, the Marlins need help wherever they can find it. Whether it's Ruggiano, whether it's Polanco, whether it's Dobbs, whether it's Marcel Ozuna, who is on deck and getting ready to get his first big league at bat. Here now, Dobbs at first, and the 1-1 one -one to Ruggiano. Hefner went to Oral Roberts, the guy that uh, kind of bounced around and was a, a waiver claim on a couple of occasions in the offseason. Pirates. Claimed him off waivers, then the Mets claimed him off waivers. No swing. I would check on the uh, scouting report for Jeremy Hefner. 
generally a control guy. He's not going to overpower you with the the stuff that we saw from Matt Harvey. Big slow 12 to 6 curveball slider with some pretty good tilt. Ruggiano's ground ball. There's one and there's two. Tejada and Murphy turn the double play. And here comes Ozuna and here comes Wednesday's game and it's coming quicker than you think. Tomorrow is a 1240 start. You can save 60% with the Chevron Crazy 8 ticket offer. Fill up at a participating Chevron to get $8 home run porch or $18 home plate box tickets. Visit your local Chevron or Marlins.com slash Chevron for details. Restrictions apply. Well, five years in single A, Marcelo Zuna signed very young out of the Dominican Republic. Ten games in double A, and here he is. His first big league at bat. Hefner bends one in for a strike. Boy, a guy who you talk to those who've seen him the last couple of years, and they talk about his raw power. A swing and a miss there. Now, he broke his hand. All three outfielders that were headed to Jacksonville had injuries, but Ozuna broke his hand running into a wall in spring training. So in his 10 games in Jacksonville, he lit it up. 42 at bats, five homers, three doubles, and a triple. They'll he, try to expand the strike zone because the, the early scouting report on Ozuna, but it's something that he worked on and was able to control in double A, was chasing a lot of bad pitches. Breaking ball foul back and out of play. It's, you know, it's funny, in the middle of spring training, if you were to ask, which one of the young outfielders would get to the big leagues first? Probably be Yelich, then maybe Marisnik, then maybe Ozuna. And here's Ozuna first. Two and two. Both Yelich and Marisnik working back from their injuries as well. Two two. And it's out. That's a good example of, of the youngster. Hanging in there after falling behind 0 2. Checking their box score last night. Christian Yelich had a couple of hits, two for three, and all of a sudden the average is up near 270. I'll tell you what, he's getting his money's worth for his first major league at bat. Yeah, he's having a very good at bat. It's number eight on the way. Fastball in. And that one's going to find the seats. So Ozuna just keeps battling. Hefner trying to sneak a fastball under his hands. And I guess, Rich, the word we got on Giancarlo was a little better than most thought. Hamstring strain on the 15 day DL. Marlins are hopeful that after those 15 days, he might be ready to go. 3 2. Swing and a miss. And Ozuna goes down. Hefner strikes him out. And the Marlins and the Mets are scoreless.
a sushi stand. That's a that's a lot of sushi. Mm. Oh. Hey, it's uh, email Twitter Tuesday. That means the Contessa is here tonight. Hey, Dub, how are you? Now, we got your tweet late last night that you were flying across the country. I was. I had to chime in and get in on the broadcast late night with the fish and early start to email Twitter Tuesday. And after that long day and night at the ballpark, some Marlins fans left on still a bit of a high. Here's what Steve Zizek had to say on Twitter after the game. He said, boom, baby, what a game. I don't think I'll sleep tonight, but hopefully I will dream of a replay with Nick Green driving in two cru crucial runs and Justin Ruggiano hitting seeds all over the park and our pitchers stepping it up huge. Fun to be a part of that and watch it. Ha! And then, you know, he couldn't sleep, so he still had to keep firing on Twitter. He said, I forgot to mention you fans, of course, who stuck it out for the whole game. We see you guys. That's love right there. Go fish. An hour later, still on Twitter. Dang, also forgot Rob Brantley for driving in Dobbs. Huge hit by Dobber to get on and Brantley to knock him in. Hashtag still awake. So a, light, a late night for the fish for Steve Ciszek, who is still firing on Twitter after that big win in the 15th inning. Hashtag for him last night was still awake. The hashtag today for the broadcast is longest day. So hit us up on Twitter at Fox Marlins using that hashtag. Guys. Thank you, Allison. Juan Lagares, Jeremy Hefner, Mike Baxter for the Mets. And a fly ball down the left field line. It brings Pierre over and it's going to land foul. All right. Email time from Jake in North Palm Beach. At the old football stadium a ball that reached the blue seats in left field a blue seater was a benchmark that you guys used to use as a I guess a point of demarcation for a long home run. What would you say is the equivalent of a blue seater in this ballpark. Is it the Budweiser balcony. Yeah I'd say that's a good uh, measure. The Budweiser uh, balcony. I think this year any home run <laughs> for Miami and they've had trouble hitting the ball out of the park. Anything out near the uh, home run sculpture certainly uh, merits that John Buck's home run off of the home run sculpture merited that one two pitch this is down low. But of course Buck caught 15 innings last night. And tonight, at least to begin the night, he has some time to to rest those weary legs. Our Twitter poll: Will John Buck keep up his current home run and RBI pace? Hashtag Buck yes. Gotta be careful when you say that. Hashtag Buck no. <laughs> You guys. Oh, Buck, yes. <laughs> Pierre makes the catch. Careful, Tom. <laughs> All right, you want John Buck? You want him up on that home run sculpture? This was it. And that was home run number nine. It ties him for the most by a Met during the month of April with Carlos Delgado and Dave Kingman. And it also ties a major league record for homers by a catcher before the end of April. Johnny Bench and Charles Johnson of the 2001 Marlins. And it gives uh, John Buck 25 RBIs. He only met with more RBIs in the month of April. Jeff Kent at 26. And this game tonight being the last game in the month of April. As we begin anew tomorrow. That's right. May 1st and it starts at 1240 12 o'clock for Marlins live weather day. Mets and Marlins with the block Dylan G. Slowly just pumped high fastballs up there and Hefner went down swinging. Yeah, the other thing about slowly you forget when he was consistent with the twins he had three consecutive years where he won 10 or more games. Mike Baxter now who's 0 for 1 in the ball game. Had an observation and a tweet from Cliff. He said Ozuna's stance reminds me a little bit of Vlad. Vladimir Guerrero. Who we had that tweet and question last night about Dontro Willis and where he was. We told you Long Island Ducks independently as you pointed out Vlad Guerrero there as well. 
A guy like Dontrell would have been used somewhere in that game last night. <laughs> well, a guy like Carlos Zambrano or Levon Hernandez. In the air, greens out and calling for it. And Nick, who has the shaving cream out of his eyes, makes the catch. And first it was sushi, now we're into pizza. Longest games. Let's flash back to 2003. It was a getaway day, right, Tommy Hutton? The Fish and the Cardinals. Fish were on their way to Arizona. Mike Lowell with a three run shot, a blue seater, to tie it in the ninth inning. Fernando Vina, who I believe was 0 for 9 going into that at bat. Got the base hit off Carl Pavano, who was a starting pitcher and had to come in and pitch out of the bullpen. The final out was finally recorded. Tony La Russa and his ball club headed out, and the Marlins headed to Arizona. And Miguel Olivo goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Longest games by time 6 07 against St. Louis. Now that's longest Marlin games by time. Of course, last night, the Angels and the Athletics beat the Marlins and the Mets by about an hour and uh, four innings. High pop. It's Murphy calling for it, and Olivo is out number one. Yeah, they went 19 innings. There were 597 pitches thrown. He has struck out. And it was a walk-off home run, a two-run shot in the 19th by Brandon Lyon. And that's that's so Oakland because they do it with the long ball. Brandon Moss with the home run. Albert Pujols in that game for the Angels was four for eight with a couple of home runs. And then Brandon Lyon just pied himself. He didn't wait for anybody to or Brandon Moss. Excuse me. Did I say Lyon. <laughs> that's OK. We saw Brandon Lyon. But yeah Brandon Moss pied himself. Instead of uh, letting a teammate go ahead and do it. Nick Green aboard. You got to give credit to both teams yeah. pitching staffs. They went out. Uh, Jerome Williams for them. Hang on a second. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, let's go ahead. Here, here very, you go. Very original. <laughs> Slowey's bunt is foul. Marlins trying to push Green up to second after a one out walk. Mm -hmm. 
One pair in the top of the order on deck. This one is going to end up in the same spot. And it's 0-2. Jordan tweets, speaking of Carlos Zambrano, where is he? The last time I saw Carlos Zambrano, he was pitching for Team Venezuela when they played a game against the Marlins, an exhibition game up at Roger Dean Stadium. He started that game. And Slowey misses on all three bunt attempts. Watch party on Thursday at Duffy Sports Grill, the Intercoastal Mall, North Miami Beach. Marlins and Phillies first pitch at 7.05. Prizes, Philly, the energy team, and wear your Marlins gear. Get your first drink free at Duffy's Sports Grill. I think you can get a Philly cheesesteak at Duffy's. Too. Go to Marlins.com for more details. Pierre takes a strike. We've had a lot of people asking, and this is a, a tweet from Aloha Ray. What was the name of the song and the artist for Late Night with the Marlins? Rolls over on a ground ball, does Pierre. Davis will pick it up and step on the bag. Hefner has looked sharp, so has Slowey. And that's why the Mets and the Marlins are scoreless. by the authority the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. You know I know we have a theme tonight of uh, long games but it, it really appears we have a theme of food too. We've had some great shots of some of the tremendous food here at Marlins Park. That's uh, all up to our acclaimed director Jim Holly. He was critically acclaimed until the other day. Now he's just acclaimed. And he's no longer in critical condition. <laughs> and then the camera folk here seem to be uh, searching out the shots and searching out the food. Ruben Tejada, Kevin Slowey. Here we go with the fourth. That's a fastball for a strike. David Wright, Lucas Duda to follow. Kevin Slowey, 10 out of 11 first pitch strikes. Hefner's 9 out of 10. La Marlina, who is a uh, contributor on these Twitter Tuesdays. Why don't players use whipped cream instead of shaving cream for celebration? 
it will not sting, it will taste better. And that's the advice from La Marlina. I, that's a good suggestion. And I'll give you the simple explanation because teams don't stock whipped cream in Major League Clubhouse. But they could. Well, there's a lot of things they could stock that they don't. We'll talk to uh, we'll talk to Bean in the kitchen, and he could get some of those cans of the spray ready whip. They could just spray it. The shaving cream, I guess, is is there. It's handy. And it gives you that uh, cool menthol feel. Which isn't so cool when it was in your eye. Not when it's in your eyes. Uh, this. Oh. Yeah, I felt so bad because the game, five and a half hour game. Nick Green with two key sacrifice flies. One that tied the game. One that won the game. And we never really got a chance to talk to him. And of course, as a few have tweeted out, Brendan included. There have been some pie injuries. Chris Coglin had to uh, and still has to wear that one, so to speak. The knee injury with the uh, West Helms. Outside corner and who it's a hot and knew it. He was already headed to the dugout. You know, a lot of times you'll see a guy headed up the line if he thinks it's ball four. He knew that was so much of a strike. He just headed to the dugout. <laughs> Good pitch. That's beautiful. Look at that pitch number six. David Wright now. Wright popped to Marcelo Zuna out in right field. We've had a lot of uh, tweets about why the Marlins have uh, promoted Ozuna instead of uh, a Yelich or a Marisnik. Marisnik just getting back to playing, number one. So he. Doesn't have many ABs. And I believe he's still in Jupiter before he heads yes. to double A. Uh, Kristen Yelich just starting to swing the bat a little bit better. Uh, striking out a little bit too much. Uh, hitting near 270. And the other thing that, that complicates things just a little Kristen Yelich not on the 40 man roster. So that kind of changes, not to say he won't be here. But it kind of makes you have to make some moves to bring him up here. And the Marlins have another option in Triple A as far as outfielders and guys that can add some offensive spark, and that's Matt Diaz. Matt Diaz at last check hitting 342 as a couple of home runs, and as we've seen over the years, can pound left-handed pitching. Swing by Lucas Duda and he fouls it back. Lucas Duda and Ike Davis have the two base hits against Kevin Slowey tonight. Slowey and Jeremy Hefner doing exactly what their managers want, and that's get quick outs. 0 2. And it's out. Keisha tweets Get in, loser. We're going shopping. That's from Mean Girls. <laughs> Down he goes, Kevin Slowey. Sharp tonight, a one, two, three, four. Mets and Marlin. The night after. Scoreless.
Honda. Visit your Honda dealer for great lease and finance deals on fuel-efficient Hondas. And by Checkers. Feast on. Plenty of bobbles in the Bobblehead Museum. And an Expo fan. In fact, a, uh, a buddy of Yuppie's. It, it could be Yuppie. It might be what Yuppie looks like in real life. Yuppie, the lovable mascot of the Montreal Expos. When last we saw him, he was taped to the uh, that dugout roof in the Big O, I think by some visiting team. Solano into right field, a line drive gathered in by Mike Baxter. Actually, actually yuppie has been spotted in, in another sporting environment. Isn't that right, Craig Benervini? Yeah, he's been adopted by Les Canadiens, the Montreal Canadiens. It looks a little funny. He still has his uh, Expo uniform on. He goes around, and uh, he's very popular up there. With the Bleu Blanc et Rouge. Now it's time for the Marlins to get a little something going and try to uh, support Kevin Slowey. Polanco flied to right on the first pitch he saw in the first. Rich, I love this tweet from one of our favorites at Lomo Marlins. Tuesdays have become my favorite day of the week during my long rehab. I need a life. Well, we hope we can provide a little of that tonight. <laughs> Hurry back. And uh, I guess it's a month away. The Marlins uh, will welcome him with uh, open arms because uh, the Marlins could use not only his bat, but his presence in the clubhouse. Solano. Back to first. Matt tweets that he watched last night's ball game up in New York with a bar full of Met fans. Well, at least it had a happy ending for Matt. I think he probably celebrated quietly to himself. Ball and a strike. Solano from first. Two and one. Got Dobbs on deck. Then Ruggiano. Jeremy Hefner has given up just the two hits. A single by Dobbs and a single here by Solano to lead off the bottom of the four. And Solano's running on the pitch. Polanco fouls it at the plate. I like the idea. We haven't seen a lot of that. And I know Mike Redman has reasons for not putting on a hit and run because sometimes you need the right ingredients. But uh, it was a good, good opportunity there. The count was two and one. Yes, Solano has okay speed and certainly have back control in Polanco. Two two. A bouncer to third right picks it. Good feed. Nice turn by Murphy. And the Mets turn a slick double play. David Wright going to his left. And Daniel Murphy completes it. Boy, the double play ball has uh, really uh, been a factor the last couple of games. It's the second double play the Marlins have hit into tonight. And they hit into five double plays last night. Any question as to how that neck might affect David Wright's throwing. I think uh, any questions were answered. He made a good throw. Here's Dobbs now. He singled in the second. He homered off Hefner in New York. Sometimes as a hitter, Dobbs trying to be aggressive. First pitch, base hit last time up. But with a quick two outs like that, you, you want to 
give your pitcher a little rest. You want to extend Hefner a little bit. You knew he was going to take that pitch, but you also knew he probably wanted to swing at it because he got a good one to hit. Ball in a strike and a score this game. Mets and Marlins. And Dobbs gets jammed, pops it up. Davis over, and he makes the catch. Good pitch by Hefner. Fifth inning is here already. Still scoreless. Scoreless game, just for men auto stop, foolproof stat. Stolen base percentage since 2000. Jimmy Rollins, we've talked all the time about Rollins and how good he is. Carl Crawford, Ichiro, Jose Reyes, and Juan Pierre at 75%. Of course, Pierre in bulk is sitting on 600. He's at 599. Yeah, he saw that number. He'll make it nice and even with his next one. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Hey, Rich, thank you very much. Uh, Longtime Marlin fans know the guy to my right, but all Hurricane fans know Jay Rokich, who on these very grounds is very famous, calling Kane's games as that shot goes down the line and into the corner for extra bases for the Mets and Daniel Murphy. Jay Ro, good to see you for five years, the voice of the Marlins for PA. What are your favorite names? Well, it was a great experience, and I loved being here and winning the World Series. Uh, obviously, Jeff. Cool nine was uh, one of my who favorites. All right, who else? And then the catcher, number zero nine, Benito Santiago, was very, very good. And what else? And then the, we had some shortstops, uh, Renteria or Bobby Bonilla. So I always like to try to accentuate <laughs> and to get the crowd involved. What do you do with a Walt Weiss as a public address announcer? It, there's, not, there's not a whole lot you can do with Walt Weiss except that hope that he gets hits and produces well. You had a line for Gary Sheffield, although it wasn't something you did on the PA back in the day. Yes, we came up with whenever Gary hit a home run, we asked to put up on the scoreboard compliments of the chef. And uh, obviously, Gary hit his share of home runs, yeah. so it, it was a popular expression. Jay's now doing the PA for the Panthers, of course, and he still does UM baseball for 40 40, 45 years 45 since 1968. Years. So it's been a great uh, affiliation. And I just love uh, all sports, and I love coming out to see the Marlins play. Uh, drive the deep center. Ruggiano makes the uh, catch, and the Mets will move up a base. Jero, one last thing. 97, the excitement of doing the World Series games, the public address. It was great, uh, Craig. It was uh, the highlight of my public address announcing career to get to announce a game one at home and then a game seven at home to see Charles Johnson play, a former Hurricane. It was without question the highlight, and I will never, ever forget winning the World Series in 19. How do you like the park? 
It's amazing. It's gorgeous. And I wish more people would come on a daily basis. Let's support the Marlins and keep the faith. All right, J-Ro Keach. Don't come much better here. Good to see you. Thank you, my friend. All right, J-Ro, back to you guys. All right, the scoreless ball game in the fifth. Infield in. Anthony Recker is up. And Recker takes ball one. The Mets and the Marlins had trouble scoring last night. The Mets were one for 18 with runners in scoring position. They left 14 on base. The Marlins not much better. They were two for 13 with runners in scoring position. And Recker takes down low. Well, Davis uh, with the long fly ball that'll count as an 0 for 1 with runner in scoring position. But he got the job done and he moved Murphy over to third because the fly ball was deep enough. Breaking ball line to left Pierre is there makes the catch tagging is Murphy and he'll score easily and the Mets are on the board first here tonight on a sacrifice fly by catcher Anthony record. No matter who Terry Collins puts behind the plate as his catcher. He's been getting a guy producing runs good swing by Wrecker line drive and. Juan Pierre was not going to throw out Daniel Murphy. So the Mets executing very well in this inning. Lagaris now, the Mets center fielder tonight. The Mets, and we talked about it last night, have hit a dry spell, having dropped five in a row and six of seven. And they've had trouble scoring runs. In that stretch, much like the Marlins for the entire month of April. During their five game losing streak, the Mets have hit 105 with runners in scoring position. That'll get you a five game losing streak. Well, they score a run here without getting a hit with a runner in scoring position. The fly ball by Davis to move him over, and the fly ball by Record to get him in. And slowly finishes the inning with a strikeout. Hold on there. One nothing Mets. Get those guys out of there. They're having a good time. Marlins.com, your one stop shop for breaking news, tickets, sweepstakes, merchandise, and more. Check out the new Marlins Park seat views for an interactive 360 degree experience from anywhere in the ballpark. Pick out your seats, purchase tickets. It's never been faster or more convenient. Go to Marlins.com for more information. In Miami tonight, the New York Mets have given Jeremy Hefner a run. And Hefner so far is holding up just fine. Just two hits. Singles by Donovan Solano and Greg Dobbs. Justin Ruggiano, Marcel Ozuna, and Miguel Olivo here in the bottom of the fifth. And Hefner at the bottom dropping out of that one. The counts 0 and 1. Oh, 
Ball and a strike. Ruggiano three hits last night. And at the start of the night, Ruggiano looked like a, a completely different hitter. He struck out his first two times up, and he did not look good doing it. Harvey got him on sliders both times. But from that point on, Ruggiano was locked in. He would go on in his next five at bats or plate appearances, if you will, to get three hits and walk twice. Two and two. Hefner's had the ability to elevate that fastball and get strikeouts with it. And there's one out. Here's Allison Williams. Marcelo is about to step into the box for his second A.B. in his major league debut here today. And perhaps he left the Jacksonville Suns just in time. You see, they're making their trip right now from Jacksonville to Jackson, Tennessee. Look at this tweet from his former teammate James Leverton saying, Sucks when your bus is hotter than the new game you played the day before. Apparently, the AC not exactly working on that bus ride. Life down in the minors, a little different than here in the big leagues. Uh, yeah, I guess the hashtag of longest day could apply to that tweet as well. And Ozuna lines it in the left field. His first big league hit. Waited on a breaking ball and he drilled it. And the 22 year old is aboard with one out. Yeah, it's fun as sometimes you can tell a little bit about a first at bat how it translates to the next at bat. He saw nine pitches that first day B before he struck out. Had a little better idea and caught himself a nice breaking pitch out over the plate. Congrats to Marcelo Zuna. You know what he can tweet that picture to the guys on the bus. Oh that will go over well. <laughs> yeah. Hey it's nice and cozy and air conditioned in this ballpark. Now Olivo's up and Ozuna's at first base. And of course, you toss the ball out, and then Solano is only in his second year in the big leagues, and he knows the trick to catch the ball and toss another one up. And the rookie feels like you just threw away his first big league hit. Or you you give him a ball that's that's signed. Yeah, you see he's got a couple of balls there. You you give him one and, and you misspell his name. You have Pablo Zuna on there or something like that. <laughs> Hefner wants to talk to his catcher Anthony Record. One nothing Mets Marlins. The theme last night was runs are tough to come by and that's continued here tonight. Mike Redman had a short bench to deal with last night. With Joe Mahoney being injured. And then, of course, Giancarlo Stanton went down with a hamstring injury. In case you haven't heard, both were placed on the 15 day disabled list. You've seen Ozuna. Brad Hand has joined the team, the lefty. Marlins have seen him as a starter. And so, reinforcements for a bullpen that was somewhat depleted 11 innings worth last night. That pen gave up just one run. On only eight hits. There's Brad Hands. Hopefully, Barbara's watching and uh, will participate once again in an email and Twitter Tuesday. Thanks for the tip on the Cuban sandwich. We took her scouting report and uh, tasted the uh, Cuban sandwich from Tony Olivas. I think in Philly, we'll just have a, a cheesesteak and, and call it Cuban. Zuna back with a dive. You know, sometimes, and I'm sure this happens to me, I'm watching television, I'm not. Listening to what I'm watching, if something pops up, you're not sure what you heard. 
Marlins Nation just tweeted, T Hut just made a Pablo Ozuna reference. Hashtag now is his name is Marcel Ozuna. Oh, I know that. Even though well, we, had, we were joking about the name on the ball. That's good, this is a good follow up, though. All Even right. though they had big hopes for Pablo. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to make many references to Marcelo Zuna. Swing and a miss. Levo goes after a breaking ball. Hefner has been outstanding tonight for the Mets. Jeremy Hefner now. Four strikeouts. This guy put up pretty good numbers in the minor leagues, Hefner. You mentioned uh, drafted by the Padres back in 07. Green pulls it foul, it's 0 and 1. Grazed by a pitch was green in the third. With two outs. Marcel Ozuna at first. Cholula Hot Sauce Spotlight. Pensacola, Florida. Grew up in Atlanta. Good minor league numbers. Braves 32nd round out of junior college. That ground ball, diving stop right on his feet, whips it across in time. A terrific play by David Wright. Wright showing off that glove, that gold glove from back in 07 and 08. And the Mets hanging on to a 1 0 lead. Camera 12 going strong. Marlins Park, the Fish, the Mets. Last night, 15 innings, five and a half hours. Tonight, a rapid pace. A lot of announcers, but not a lot of runs or hits for that matter. Into the sixth inning in a one nothing ball game. Jeremy Hefner against Kevin Slowey. One's pushed foul 
and out of play. Mike Baxter, Ruben Tejada coming up for Terry Collins and the Mets. It's always fun, Rich, for you and I to uh, get text messages and tweets from some of our crack staffers that are around baseball and with other organizations. And I just received one from uh, one of our friends uh, who has seen the double A club, the Jacksonville club for the last week and very impressed with Ozuna, how the ball comes off his bat and loves the way Yelich swings the bat and basically said the Marlins have a couple of uh, terrific outfielders for a long time. That's good to hear. Ozuna getting his first big league hit. And a strikeout by Slowey. Hefner goes down. We check in with Craig Minervini. Well, thank you very much, uh, Rich. One thing the Mets have done better than anybody else is uh, they are number one in the league and seeing the most pitches per plate appearance. Number one in baseball, that is, at 4.05 pitches per plate appearance. Other teams at the top of the list, those that are known for their belief in Saber metrics, the Oakland A's who were number one overall last year. The Boston Red Sox are high them. Marlins is a younger team is where you expect it toward the bottom 24th seeing 3.8 pitches per plate appearance. What's the difference last year. Oakland at the top Colorado at the bottom. The A saw almost 1500 more pitches over the course of the season. That of course goes a long way toward more walks if you have a good eye and getting the opposing pitcher out. David Wright talked about it this week of being one of the managers for the Mets to make a pitcher work. Now in this game tonight Kevin Slowey came in after six uh, five innings 68 pitches 17 batters right on the mark of four pitches per plate appearance. The guy who leads the Marlins in that is a guy named Chris Vileka. He's about 4.4 so far. One of those stats, it's kind of subtle, guys, but it can go away. And I think about last night, remember Jose Fernandez did not get on early, but he had, what, an 8, 9, 10 pitch at bat. It did a long way toward putting Harvey out of the game. All right, thank you, Craig. There's a breaking ball. It misses outside. That stat, Tommy, in terms of teams that, that see a lot of pitches how much of that reflects the uh, the potency of that lineup in a sense that pitchers know that a team like the Mets or a better example would be the Marlins are struggling offensively don't have power bats in the lineup so it's pound the strike zone time if if you're facing yeah the scouting report against the clubs like the Marlins like the Mets even though the Mets have scored uh, runs. They've been a little drought here lately. But yeah, the scouting report would be to pound the strike zone. Go after these guys, especially in a park that uh, you really have to hit one to hit it out. Chuck Hernandez saw his bullpen sparkle last night in relief of Jose Fernandez. The thing that'll drive a pitching coach crazy. Is if you're pitching against a, a weaker lineup and your pitchers out there nibbling. And I think that's my point. There are some lineups where you don't want to nibble, and I think the Marlins lineup would, would qualify, especially now that Stanton is back out of the lineup and he's been out of the lineup so much this year. The Mets big bats, the guys like Duda and Wright and Davis. They all do a very good job of getting deep into counts and seeing a lot of pitches. They're very, a very selective group. Well, and we saw that in Cincinnati, certainly with uh, Joey Votto. Three two coming to Baxter. Slowey pounces on it, and he fires to first. And Slowey's got two outs here in the sixth inning. This season, the Marlins Fan Express bus is back. It's a VIP bus for 50 people that picks you up and takes you right to Marlins Park for a game. Find out how you and your friends can reserve this bus by contacting Marlins Group Sales. Ask about the Fan Express. Talking about a lineup like we were talking about, that I guess the ideal would be to have. A little bit of both, you know, to have a couple of those patient hitters who are going to see a lot of pitches, and then have you know have the guy who's a little bit of a free swinger, have him amongst those guys too. I think that's Oakland. I mean, I, it, Oakland is a a team that 
lives and dies by the home run. They certainly lived with it at the uh, in the 19th inning. Brandon Moss last night. I think I was looking quickly. I believe they're seventh in the American League in home runs. You and I were talking about the uh, the one of the clubs that's been a surprise certainly in the National League, the, the Colorado Rockies, and the offense that they put together this year so far. You know, one of the things about the Rockies, they have a core group of players that have been together for four or five years. Dexter Fowler, Carlos Gonzalez, Troy Tulowitzki. They lead the league in runs, hits. They're second in the league in home runs. 0 oh, 2. That one's driven to right center. Hit pretty well. Ruggiano is there. He makes the catch. It's played by Ruggiano and Slowey. Goes 1 2 3 through the Mets in the sixth. Wise, FoxSportsFlorida.com. Click on Game Connect and then ask the broadcast. Type in your question or on Twitter at Fox Marlins. The hashtag tonight, longest day. We've been talking about longest games and longest nine inning games in the American League. You knew it would be the Yankees and the Red Sox in 06 and the Dodgers and the Giants in 01. Extra innings, eight hours for the White Sox in Milwaukee, 25 innings. Giants and Mets, 23 innings back in 1964. Mm. Now, the longest professional baseball game in history, 33 innings, eight hours, 25 minutes, 32 innings were played over the 18th and the 19th of April in 1981. Pawtucket and Rochester. There were some pretty good players in that game too. A couple of uh, future Hall of Famers. Pitch misses down low. Wade Boggs was at third base for Pawtucket. Marty Barrett was at second base. Not a Hall of Famer, but Rich Gedman was in that ball game as well. Down goes slowly. Up comes Pierre. Some guy named Ripken was playing third base for Rochester. Ripken was two for 13 in that game. Boggs was four for 12. And Pawtucket got a run in the bottom of the 33rd to win it three to two. The, here the funny thing is both teams got a run in the 21st inning <laughs> and that's it. There were no other runs in extra innings except the two in the tw in the 21st and then Pawtucket's run in the bottom of the 33rd. Well that happened last night in Oakland. The, the Angels scored to go ahead in the top of the 15th 
and Oakland came back to tie it in the bottom half before it was uh, all said and done in the 19th. Going back to what we were talking about, both pitchers tonight going right after the hitters. Before this inning started, Hefner was 15 of 17, first pitch strike, slowly 18 of 20. Matthew wants to know can Ozuna play all the outfield positions? If he's hitting well, when Stanton gets back, would the Marlins keep him up? Hefner drops it, kicks it, shovels it, and gets Pierre. And Hefner knew he had a fast guy, and he was trying to find a handle on it. He finally did. Let me put it this way anybody in this lineup that hits is going to stay. That's the bottom line. And, and I love the old school tweets and texts. Got one here from out west. Just to, to let us know we're talking about seeing pitches and getting deep into counts. The two teams in last year's World Series were 27th and 28th in fewest pitches seen. Going deep in a count is great if you're a pitcher. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's not a it's not a science that's just there and you can lay it out and that's gonna happen. There are a lot of variables. And I think baseball is the one sport you can say that about compared to the other major sports. Well it's funny how advanced metrics and statistics crept into baseball first now it's getting much more prominent play in college basketball professional basketball Davis is back and Ike Davis makes a nice catch Jeremy Hefner has stifled Miami for six innings it's one nothing. This is a Kevin Slowey Jeremy Hefner showdown tonight. Tomorrow, remember, 1240 start. And it's Weather Day, CBS4 Weather Day at the ballpark. Take advantage of the crazy eights offer $8 home run porch ticket or an $18 home plate box ticket with your receipt of eight gallons of gas from your local Chevron station. I can see myself in some glasses like that guy. Not that guy. You like the shranky, the shranky ones. Yeah. We could go on sprockets with that, Tommy. <laughs> Slowy delivers a fastball for a strike. We're still punchy from last night <laughs> when it, we ransacked the. It happens. 
We ransacked the mini bar here in the booth in the uh, 13th inning. David Wright fouls it off. David Wright, of course, signed to a long deal, eight years, $138 million. This is his 10th year with the Mets. And a fastball up and in, and he went after it. Just enough he uses that fastball to tie up hitter. Slow he's done it well. This might be his best game all year. He just needs some runs. Check in on the Mardi Gras Casino scoreboard. Atlanta just has Washington's number. They have dominated the Nationals this year, and they're up five to one in that one. Tim Hudson, Hudson going for his 200th win in Padre, that game. Padres on the road over Chicago. Night games in Arizona and Chavez Ravine. Chloe snaps off a breaking ball. Lucas Duda has a single and a strikeout, a run on three hits for the Mets. The thing about Slowey, he has that curveball that kind of lulls hitters, and then he spots the fastball. It's about 89, 90. He'll touch 90 once in a while. But we've seen him a couple of times tonight. He has seven strikeouts. We've seen him a couple of times go up in the zone. To get a hitter to chase it when he gets two strikes on him. There's his breakdown. 90 pitches here in the seventh. Ball's hit pretty well in the gap, left center field, and that was going to bang off the base of the wall. Lucas Duda has another hit, his fifth double of the season, and he's two for three tonight. And the Mets are in business here in the seventh. You know, I mentioned the seven strikeouts, a, uh, not a career high, a season high. That fastball just stayed out over the plate. That's a great area for Duda. He likes that pitch there because he doesn't try to pull everything and he stings this ball. Daniel Murphy now. Murphy's bounced into a double play. He has doubled and scored. Murphy's double snapped what was a, a one for 20 skid. I would venture to say, without exhausting the crack staff, Daniel Murphy hasn't endured many of those in his professional career. Ruggiano will take it. So he has the second out. Yeah, and it also tells you where he was with his batting average because he's still around 290. That's oh, that's a, where that was. That's where you and I sit. Look at that. Now the mini bar that we ransacked is back in the back of the booth. This is our vantage point here at Marlins Park. Bob Fleming all over the uh, ballpark tonight, getting those shots. That's the RF cam. A welcome addition. To the telecast. When we got pat past midnight last night, that camera was banned in our booth. There was a yeah, it was. <laughs> there was a shot from last night's game, and I must have been from the RF cam of a run scoring shot through the aquarium. Do we have that anywhere in the uh, halls of the crack staff production truck? At least I thought I saw that on a, uh, a replay sequence. Of course, in the 14th inning, I may have imagined it. Yeah, you thought you saw a lot of things. Ike Davis singled. Back in the second. He's flied out in the fifth. The Mets. With Lucas Duda out there at second base. And slowly steps off. Marlins bullpen pretty still right now. You know, Slowey's at 95 pitches. Well, it all goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the game. Kevin Slowey doing exactly what his manager wanted him to do. So it's Jeremy Hefner. Far to his right is Dobbs hits Slowey on the numbers, and he steps on the bag. Seven innings for Slowey. 
But the Marlins haven't scored him any runs. Sound familiar? Boy, it's been another terrific night for Kevin Slowey. Seven strikeouts, a season high for him. He's given up just the one run. And that run came in the fifth inning. A sack fly up the bat of Anthony Wrecker, the Mets catcher. A sacrifice fly drove in Daniel Murphy. How about Marcelo Zuna making his Major League debut tonight? Lines a single in his second at bat in the left field. Ball gets saved into the dugout. Little decoy by Donovan Solano. But uh, acknowledged by Marcel. Congratulations, his first major league hit. That's good to see. A recurring theme, not only on a uh, email Twitter Tuesday, has been the Marlins are scoring no runs for Kevin Slowey. And here he is again in a 1 0 game, pitching well. That pop up's going to find the top of the dugout. Both pitchers, by the way, very similar in their approach. It's just enough of a fastball. You you see guys that are throwing upper 80s and around 90 still getting in on hitters because they're spotting pitches, using the off-speed stuff well. At Fox Marlins. On a Twitter email Tuesday. Polanco fouls it off. <laughs> JD tweets, I recall weather day at Sun Life Stadium. Not fun. No. <laughs> no the kids would get out there at 10 in the morning, they'd have it, they'd be roaring for about an hour and a half, and then everybody would just be zonked after sitting in the sun for two hours. Kids couldn't hydrate enough. Here at Marlins Park, they can uh, just briefly slide back the uh, roof and let the weather balloon out and then close things up again. Travis, who do I yell at about the bottom ticker saying at bat Upton for the Braves? They have too many of those. <laughs> now, we don't see that on our feet. We essentially have the telecast that we're sending out to. All parts Fox, and then it's beamed out to your cable provider, be it DirecTV or UVerse or whatever. So that bottom line is not ours per se. We don't control it. If if it if we did control it, there's a variety of things we would write on there, but we wouldn't say at bat up to. So I'm not sure who you should yell at, but don't don't yell at don't yell at us. Greg Dobbs now he has singled and popped out. But I agree sometimes the, the clutter on the screen now and that brings up an interesting 
point because this weekend we experimented with Fox tracks on the screen from the center field camera and it was up during the entire at bat. Normally the crack staff will pop the Fox tracks in when there's a borderline pitch or a pitch like that. That's just an example. And I'm curious to know how fans liked it, if they like the it's good question. The Fox tracks in for the entire shot from center field, which we did on Sunday. And a swing and a miss. And I think both you and I were surprised that we liked it as much as we did. I was uh, pleasantly surprised. I, I thought beforehand that I might not like it. And I, I kind of liked the way you could see how pitchers worked. And uh, stayed away, went inside occasionally. I like Preston Wilson's idea, and that is to add a wrinkle to the Fox track and make the dots correspond to the type of pitch thrown blue for fastball, or red for fastball, blue for breaking ball, green for changeup, something to that effect. So not only can you see the pattern, but also the location of each pitch. Where is he throwing his fastball? Where is he throwing the breaking ball? And a good changeup. He threw a couple good changeups in that at bat to Greg Dobbs. This apparently the technical portion of Twitter Tuesday. And his changeup. A lot of times we talk about changeups. Sometimes an eight or ten mile an hour differential. Hefner's is about five or six. Not not that much, but just enough. Talking to. Mets bullpen coach Ricky Bonus about Hefner and Ricky, an old friend, said makes his home here in South Florida. Said that Hefner was outstanding his last time out. And just what you said, it command of the changeup. There's Ricky. Able to throw it to both sides of the plate. He is going to be a major league pitching coach someday. He was Puerto Rico's pitching coach in the World Baseball Classic. For Edwin Rodriguez. Ruggiano up there. The count's one and two. You know, another guy that someday we will be talking about as a major league manager. Joe Espada. I think you are right. Great for us last night while he was Mike and, and he was the uh, third base coach. For that uh, Puerto Rico team. If you had a chance to watch Marlins live tonight or the post game early in the morning, you had a chance to hear Espada interact with the rest of the coaching staff during a ball game that was filled with twists and turns and strategy and decoys and problems in terms of lineup and nobody to pinch hit. Luciano swings and misses, and Hefner. With seven shutout innings, Jeremy Hefner looking for his first win here in 2013. And right now he's got a 1 0 lead.
Miami. It's time now for AT&T U verse Rewind. We told you about that replay shot from behind the aquarium. Well, here it is. And this was Rob Brantley's hit to right field to tie the game in the ninth. Greg Dobbs scores. The fish applaud. And that's your AT&T U verse Rewind. Kevin Slow and Jeremy Hefner have been splendid tonight. After a night filled with relievers, I mean the Mets last night used nine pitchers, including two starters. Sean Markham came out of the bullpen to finish, and uh, he's in that rotation. Anthony Recker stands in on the Garis, and then Hefner's spot coming up for the Mets in the eighth against Kevin Slowey. 96 pitches for Slowey, 85 pitches for Hefner, and a strike to Recker. Well, we touched on it earlier. The the number of games, the Marlins have played 16 games that have been decided by two runs or less. And once again, in a one-run game. Toyota Trend, six of ten games by two runs or less. Marlins are four and two at Marlins Park. Not so good outside of Marlins Park. Well, you have to just give all the credit in the world too to Kevin Slowey for the the demeanor he's had, for the professional way he's handled this whole situation, pitching without getting any support, and he's gone out there and and given his manager and his ball club. Just tremendous outing after outing. Now he's at 100 pitches. Remember last night we were talking about stressful innings and how Jose Fernandez, I think three of his four were all stressful innings. Slowy hasn't had a stressful inning tonight. Well, he's had four one, two, three innings. Good start to this one. And that's strikeout number eight. So record goes down. Eight strikeouts for Slowly, seven strikeouts for Hefner. These two right handers have been matching each other. Of course, the Mets got their run in the fifth. The Murphy double to open the inning, and two fly balls scored him. Davis is to center, moved Murphy to third. Wreckers fly ball to left, scored him. to Lagaris is a fastball that's up. Kevin Slowey has lowered his ERA now to 2.19. Juan Lagaris out of the Dominican Republic. And a 24 year old swings and misses. Ryan Webb had a nice inning last night. Midst of all of the bullpen work. There's a bunt, slow he's on it. And one of his better fastballs down to Dobbs at first base. Two outs here in the eighth. Here comes the red card. Here comes tomorrow's starters. Dylan G gets the ball for the Mets. Wade LeBlanc trying to solve his first inning woes for the fish. 12:40 first pitch, 12 o'clock. Marlins live. And after the ballgame, the Marlins are out of here. To Philly for four. Hefner to center. Ruggiano. Ruggiano makes a nice catch. Running a deep post on the grounds of the Orange Bowl. Justin Ruggiano runs down Jeremy Hefner's fly ball. Still, it's 1 0. Mets.
night's marathon of 15 innings over five and a half hours. And we did some more research. The crack staff never went home. NFL, that's the Ed Podolak game. The Dolphins and the Chiefs from uh, 71. The uh, Bugs Bunny's favorite hockey team, the Montreal Maroons in uh, Detroit. Indianapolis and Rochester. Back when Indianapolis and Rochester had NBA franchises. Well, that guy has done everything he could do. Eight innings, he's given up just the one run. Hey, while we have a moment, I want to wish our, our well wishes and a quick recovery to Marlins employee, good guy, John Anderson, recovering from hip replacement surgery. I'm sure Big John's at home, maybe checking this one out. I don't know if he stayed with us for the entire game last night, but we wish him well. So uh, get back soon, John. Marcel Ozuna, for those of you that is, have just joined us, so has Marcel Ozuna. Major League debut tonight. He struck out in the second and then lined a single to left in the fifth. Hefner to work in the eighth. Both pitchers have gone the distance right. Spears a one hopper and then sidearms it across in time. A recurring tweet tonight from Keisha. Can you guys just insert a box streaming nothing but David Wright's face? We're talking technical advances in baseball. James chimes in. Can you move the bottom scrolling bar down about two inches? It's just too high. And Brett says keep Fox tracks up for the whole game. It's not in anything's way. It's cool to follow and judge the umpires. Won't judge anyone, Brett. It's, <laughs> it's merely a guide. <laughs> but we get you. It's not a be all end all. See now JD has a different view. Would not like the Fox tracks throughout the entire game with both the crawl and the Fox tracks. It looks too crowded. I can see that and if I were to lose one of the two I'd lose the crawl. I'm with you on that one. Strike to Olivo. Hefner runs that outside. Hefner and Slowey's numbers, as Tommy has pointed out, are eerily similar tonight. Not only their numbers, but also their, their pitching styles. Hefner, seven strikeouts, no walks. Different styles than what we saw last night. A couple of power guys. Slowey, eight strikeouts, no walks. Slowey's given up four hits. Hefner's given up three. Hefner has never pitched a complete game at the major league level. Now Victor has nothing to say to us in his tweet but he's studying for finals and just wants a little bit of an energy boost by us mentioning Victor. Swing and a miss. Good slider. Olivo cracks the bat. In frustration, two outs in the eighth. Nick Green coming up. So the eight strikeouts now, a career best for Jeremy Hefner. Nick Green takes down low. We've had a few tweets asking, forget about the longest night. What about the fastest game ever? It's Keats, the last one to tweet that. Yeah, there have been some quick ones. Greg, Greg Maddox was involved in a lot of them. I remember seeing a uh, Randy Jones. Jim Cott matchup in San Diego that was about an hour 40 minutes.
Tapper wide the bag. And it's one and two. Yeah, Cott tells that story. He had they had some place to go, I think. There was a, a dinner scheduled or well, obviously daylight saving time and the game started at seven and, and it was still very light outside when it ended. Green hanging in there. Green's had a, a, a nice last few days, of course, last night. Two for four. A couple sacrifice flies. One to tie it in the ninth, one to win it in the 15th. And of course, he homered on Sunday in a 6 4 win over the Cubs. You know, the Marlins will have to make uh, some kind of a move. And he's expected to, to return when the club opens up that series in Philadelphia at Danny Echevarria. Slow roller, right, has it, and throws on the run in time. And a terrific night by Jeremy Hefner continues. One nothing. Mets. It's a one nothing game top of the ninth in Miami. Kevin Slowey's night is done. Every out of market game can be had on your favorite mobile device. Be it an iPhone an Android. Any gadget you got that has HD quality with MLB TV premium MLB TV today MLB TV baseball everywhere. Everybody having a good time. Except the hitters. The hitters are not having a good time. Jeremy Hefner and Kevin Slowey both have logged eight innings. Slowey gave up one run. Hefner hasn't given up a run. Brian Webb out of Miami's bullpen. You see the year that Webb has had, a, a nice year. 2.51 ERA. That sinker has been working from the very start. And he'll feature it here tonight, you would expect. When he came on in the game last night, he got nothing but ground balls. Ike Davis reached on an error. And Webb pitched a, a nice ninth inning. Lots of ground balls. And Rich, a, a, a good tweet from Joshua. Because of when the game ended this morning, he wants to know if this technically is considered a doubleheader. It's not, but we know where you're going with that thought. Baxter takes a couple of balls, and it's 2 0. Baxter, Ruben Tejada, David Wright in the ninth. Last night, 15 innings, five and a half hours. The Mets getting a run in the 15th. The Marlins rallying to walk off and win it.
three and one. In that 15th, Rob Grantley with the RBI single to score Greg Dobbs. And then Nick Green, the sack fly to score Ruggiano. That on a line to Ozuna in right. Ozuna is a natural right fielder. He said that's where he's most comfortable. That's where he has played uh, almost all of his professional career. I know when we uh, talked uh, to those in the organization about uh, Yelich and uh, Brisnick and Ozuna, it's exactly what we were told. He's uh, best suited. Most comfortable in right field, and I think in Christian Yelich's position, he can play center or left, maybe someday more left fielder. And we saw Marisnik make a couple of tremendous plays in center field in spring training. Ruben Tejada. And he takes a strike from Webb. Slowy goes eight. Webb is in here. Hefner's gone eight. The Mets bullpen, very quiet. They're just, uh, you know what? They're just saying, this is all you, Jeremy Hefner. A strike. You know what? I think a very good job tonight by Jerry Meals behind the plate. Marlins Live brought to you by Checkers out in center field. They'll light the spaceship up. They had to wake Jeff Conine up three or four times on the set in extra innings. I think he finally propped him up for Marlins Live. At uh, let's see, what was it about 12:30? Yeah, but you know, Niner always uh, ready for the call. This game's moving along. Those guys might want to think about heading up there. Of course, the problem is, is in their route from press area to center field set, they walk through the Clevelander. So yeah, that could be distracting at times for Craig, especially. Tejada digs in, 2-2 coming. It's foul back to the screen. Ruben Tejada, of course, had big shoes to fill last year in the absence of Jose Reyes. Hit 289. Obviously not the uh, stolen base threat. Had just four stolen bases. But he's young. He's 23 out of Panama. Alberto wants to know where's Mahoney. And we touched on that. Joe Mahoney and John Carlo placed on the uh, disabled list to make room for Marcelo Zuna and Brad Hand. Liner to right, and he makes the catch. Ozuna out there in the right field. Rich, you wonder how long Brad Hand will be here. He was telling me before the game this this would have been the day he was supposed to pitch. And I know one of the reasons he's here is because of all the pitchers that were used last night. You never know, and he's obviously much better off pitching every fifth day. So we'll see how the club decides to use him, what they want to do. But he was having a pretty good year, off to a good start in Triple A. So it's David right now, who is 0 for 3. Webb not getting the the corners. Mike Dunn, fresh as a daisy. 
compared to everybody else in either bullpen. You know, Mike said he would have been up for a, an outfield assignment because remember he was drafted by the Yankees as an outfielder. So he said, uh, you know, he could have done that. So Alex, uh, there's Mike Dunn. Right, a drive, left center, and deep. Pierre at the track makes the catch. A long fly ball out off the bat of David Wright. Jeremy Hefner looking for his first big league complete game. Miami needs a run. The Mets holding a 1 0 lead. And the Marlins trying to muster something against Jeremy Hefner, who is pitching the game of his big league career. Yeah, he is, he is venturing into territory he's never ventured before as a major leaguer, the ninth inning. Chris Coglin, Juan Pierre, Donovan Solano. Hefner had two complete games in the minor leagues. Sometimes you question those because in the minor leagues they, they at times play seven inning double header games. You don't know if it was a nine inning complete game. Brandon Lyon is up. In the Mets bullpen. That's an indication. That Bobby Parnell. Is probably not available who had to go two innings last night. He right now is the Mets closer. Fastball misses up. Terry Collins sees Hefner go over 100 pitches and go three and one on Coglin leading off the bottom of the ninth. Coglin a line drive base hit left field. Duda picks it up and Coglin is aboard. So Miami has the tying run aboard in the ninth with nobody out. Boy, a good approach. Nicely done by Chris Coughlin, his second pinch hit this year. And it's the third time tonight the Marlins have gotten the leadoff man on. But they've not gotten a base runner beyond first base. Pierre now. Pierre has bounced out three times. Shortens to bunt, takes up with Pierre. He's a ground ball machine. The problem is if he swings away here, the danger is he hits into a double play. Well, and, and the advantage that Mike Redmond has, you've got a guy. 
even though Juan Pierre has failed in a couple of bunt attempts, you have a guy who's a good bunter and you have some speed at first base in Cog. It pops through the glove of Wrecker and Coglin gets down to second. And the count is 2 and 0. Good job, I think, by JP, who I think distracted Wrecker. Got the bat up there and then was able to take it out of the zone. And it'll be a pass ball, I would assume. Oftentimes, umpires or catchers can lose sight of the flight of a pitch in a bunt situation if the bat all of a sudden appears in their eyesight. And you saw where the bat was. And a good job by Juan Pierre to take the pitch, which was clearly a ball. And so now, if you're Pierre, we'll see if they let him swing away and try to pull a ball to the right side. And either get a hit or move the runner over or possibly just lay down a bunt. We'll see. Corners are in. Mets are still thinking bunt. Hefner to the plate. Pierre does bunt. Wrecker is going to go to third, and Coglin is safe. Right close time. He thought he had him. He and McClellan go nose to nose. We talked about the advantage of speed in Chris Coglin, who got a tremendous jump from second base. On a bunt that was out in the dirt, didn't get to the grass area. It's a chancy play by Wrecker because it's a tag play at third. It's not a force play. Gary Collins joins the argument. We'll see if Coglin may have overslid the bag and maybe not kept a hand or a foot on the bag because Wright followed him. Here's a look. The throw is high. Hands on the bag. It comes off with the foot's on. When when Chris's left hand came off the bag, the foot was on the bag. You have to wonder if Wright is thinking, well, his hand came off the bag. I kept the tag on him. Well, I don't know. You know what? His foot's off. Oh, not on that shot. It's on, it's completely off Boy, that's off a the whole base. different shot right there. It is. And that's the angle that Tim McClellan had. His foot came completely off the bag. Miami got a real break. And the Marlins have runners at the corners, and you know what? That's it for Jeremy Hefner. Here's a, a look from a higher angle. Watch the foot after the hand comes off. Watch the foot come right off the bag. Right there, nothing's on the bag. You're right. Fish got a huge break. Now, so Miami down a run at the corners, no one out. In the ninth. in the bottom of the ninth and the play at third base once again Anthony record David Wright Chris Coughlin comes in and the argument starts 
Well, you give credit to David Wright, who had the presence of mind to, before he started the argument, to ask for time and get time called. Coglin at third, Pierre with great speed at first. That's Brandon Lyon against Donovan Solano. Polanco on deck, and then Dobbs behind him. How long will Pierre be anchored at first? That one bangs right off the mats of record. The Lyon last night in the eighth inning, he had a one-two-three inning. And that was one of the areas the, the Mets bullpen was not as taxed as the Marlins. They had guys come in, didn't have to throw a lot of pitches, and Lyon threw just eight pitches in that eighth inning. Middle infield is back for two, so a ground ball up the middle may cost Miami two outs, but it would tie the game. Pierre, and you saw that dive back to first. Pierre still has that enormous knock on his elbow from getting hit last night. And remember, he's sitting on career stolen base 599. Solano down the left field line. Foul. <laughs> oh and two. You knew that Donovan knew it was foul because he never left the batter's box. But he hit it well. Only 14 players have ever reached 600 stolen bases. The air away from first. Cogged in the tying run at third. Lyon misses up. Solano one for three. Hits tough to come by for both teams. A run on four hits for the Mets. No runs, four hits for the Fish. Polanco in the three spot. Greg Dobbs hitting cleanup tonight in the absence of Giancarlo Stanton, who's on the disabled list with his hamstring strain. One, two from Brandon Lyon. Bounces up there. Wow, Wrecker had to stare that one down. Well, remember with the win last night, the Marlins for the first time this year have won two in a row. Trying to sneak one in here and make it three in a row. Outfield really swung towards right center for Solano who just pulled the ball down the left field line. Check swing. No swing says Marvin Hudson. Now you get the feeling that Juan Pierre will be on the move with the count three and two. Coglin open with a single. Full count. Let's see if he runs. On his way. Liner in the right field. It will fall. Base hit. Here comes Coglin. He'll score. Pierre to third. He'll stop there. 1 1. Terrific hitting by Donovan Solano. He had a couple of hits last night with Pierre on the move. Good jump by JP. A little bit off the end of the bat, but just well placed. And just like that, not only a tie game, but because Juan Pierre was on the move, he ends up at third base. And now, if you're the Mets, what do you do here? Do you walk the bases loaded? Do you bring in. An outfielder and bring in have five infielders. There's a lot of different things you can do defensively. For now, the Mets are going to intentionally walk Polanco and bring up Dobbs. And of course, Marlin fans know that Dobbs, one of the very best in baseball last year, 
and scoring the runner from third with less than two outs. And this year, he's back on that same pace. He's done it four out of five times. For an intentional walk. That play at third base, pivotal, obviously. Oh, it's huge. And certainly a, a break. And you know what? When you have an opportunity to get a break and you get it, you really need to take advantage. And right now, Reds Ball Club is doing that. All of the Mets except the outfield converging on the mound right now. There's that Dobbs stat. Dobbs is one for three. Hey, one of the things that makes Dobbs so effective, and there are many, but one of them is he is not a ground ball hitter. He's a guy that drives the ball in the air. Saw a lion last night in that eighth inning. And he hit a fly ball to left field. So he's he's fresh off seeing Lyon and having a better idea of the way he's throwing. All right, there are your runners, Pierre Solano Polanco. Mets outfield surprisingly deep in center with Ligaris. I mean, the outfield has to be in a position to throw not only a runner, but one Pierre out at the plate on a fly ball. The Mets infield is in. The Mets dugout is waving the outfield in. They're trying to get the outfield's attention and bring them in even closer. Terry Collins is waving his right arm trying to get Ligaris in. Lion against Dobbs. Game on the line. Nobody out. Bottom nine. Bags loaded. It scoops away. Here comes Pierre Bogging. The Marlins won the marathon last night and they win the sprint tonight. With Juan Pierre finishing the final 90 feet. What a main character Anthony Recker played in this ninth inning. The throw to third. The play at third. That ball that got by probably be a wild pitch. But the Marlins scoring and just making it another exciting night at the ballpark. A pinch hit by Chris Coglin. A controversial play at third where it looked like Coglin's foot was clearly off the bag. Wright held the, the club on him. The Marlins got that break and they take advantage of the break. And come through with two runs in the bottom of the ninth. And Rich, how about the uh, losing pitcher is Jeremy Hefner. As well as he pitched tonight, those two runs charged to him. Marlins win it. 2-1.